Well, things were looking okay for a while yesterday. Morning rally. Um, interrupted by a Russian U.S. drone, Russian plane U.S. drone confrontation. That took the market down. Uncle Carl talking the market down in the 3 to 3.30 time frame. And the buy the dippers coming on the close. And it looks like a halfway t- decent day. Now, more banking problems in Europe? Shaking things up once again, folks. We got a lot to cover here on pre-market prep. We're going to bring in Ivan Feinseth, see what he thinks of the chaos. Mitch, let's get it going. Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's pre-market prep with your host, Joe Alconin. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I'm bidding a penny. I'd buy that stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, traders, investors. Bottom line, we're down 75 handles at 79 and a quarter. We hit a wall of resistance up here at the 3960 area. Now almost 100 points off that. That that's not a good thing. Uh, we have the bonds. The bonds trading up over a point, 131.11, trying to get back to the the 132 level. Uh, you got gold flight to quality here up 1380, 1924.60. Silver back in the 22 handle, up 24 and a half cents at 22.28 and a half, and also Bitcoin that's just slightly in the red, 200 dollars at 25,040. So, I guess banking problems beget more banking problems. Triple D. Yeah, it's trouble, and obviously Credit Suisse has been on the radar for a long time here, so this isn't coming out of the blue either. Um, but it's still a slap in the face and Credit Suisse is not, you know, it's not these other banks, it's not Signature Bank, it's not Silicon Valley Bank, it's a lot bigger issue. So, I mean, if we lose Credit Suisse, the contagion spreads through Europe, which you can see, DB, ING, <clears throat> all trading down significantly here today. Um, and then that obviously equals problems for our banks as well. So, I mean... This is a lot of risk here. And, you know, as much as we'd like to, you know, and I'd like to buy the dip here this morning, it's hard to just come in here and say, yeah, this is it. Because now it seems to be spreading. I don't think the PPI even matters here this morning. We're going to get it in 30 minutes. Is it 30 minutes, Mitch? PPI, 830? Yeah, a little bit less. Yep. Yeah. A little less than that. 26 minutes to PPI. I'm, I don't even think it matters. I think the Fed's going to start looking, you know, at the serious situation that we've got brewing in the banks. I think the Fed's going to be 25 and done, no matter what the PPI and the CPI looks at right now. Um, and that makes me think that, and what we have saw already happen on Monday is that the funny thing is, by about 10 o'clock, they started fleeing into mega cap tech. I'm wondering if that happens again. Tech is getting wrecked here this morning along with the overall market. You can look at the Apples and the Microsofts. They're all down significantly here. But I wonder if you don't have that flight into mega cap tech here again. Just as not saying long term we're buying these things here, but saying that you're watching the market get wrecked here. The Q's sneaky aren't quite down as much as the market right now. I wonder if Apples and the Microsofts and the Amazons and you know the mega cap tech that we saw rally meta that we saw and i am long some of these stocks short term um that we saw the rally on monday i wonder if that doesn't happen again what are your thoughts on that i don't know i mean there's always never just uh you know we haven't had like the sell everything kind of day right i mean well, we did always, yeah no no I'll, I'll back you off on that we did well, i mean but yes you did um, monday morning so monday all i'm morning. doing again i try to identify short-term relationships as well as long-term relationships and what happens in the past sometimes happens again two days ago yeah we saw apple microsoft the metas lead us out of this we saw them you know with the market mitch and you saw it too you know when Mm -hmm. we were collapsing on the regional banks monday morning and i tweet out this is scary what came to the rescue wasn't your typical utilities and all your other things those things did fine too and those things will hold up I mean, that's, you know, obvious flight to quality.
But yeah. what was very surprising was that they actually came and bought mega cap tech. That's what was surprising. I mean, somebody's saying, oh, the bonds are going to be up today. Obviously, the bonds are going to be up today. I mean, we're <laughs> you know, let, let's not, you know, I'm not like a newbie and I don't know that the bonds are going to be up when, you know, you're getting hammered here. The bonds are already up. What I'm trying yeah. to identify here is potential for trades people wouldn't think of. So yeah. I think there's the potential for short-term day trades here. Again, I'm long some of these names. And if they get the big rally, I, w- I, w- I will sell them. But what I've been trying to do this morning for the last couple of hours is buy mega cap tech under SPY. So what I was doing was like buying Microsoft and shorting SPY against it. Just short-term trading saying that maybe, just maybe, if I could buy Microsoft under SPY, and you mm-hmm. could an hour and a half ago, you can't now. It's starting to move up a little bit. Um, maybe there's some money, short-term money to be made just from that from that trade that happened on Monday. I don't know if it's going to happen again, but there's the possibility that it could happen again. Yeah, big cap, big cap tech doesn't look all that bad either. I mean, look at Apple. I mean, it's setting up also. I mean, it's, I don't think that's a bad move there that it just did. It, it, if it can get back to 157, I think there's clear room for an, uh, an actual upside move there. Um, I know if the market keeps dragging us down, maybe that turns, but Apple doesn't look bad. Google defended that 90 again um, on Monday. Yeah. Gee, did you see that move? It went right back. There's someone bigger, I feel. I've been calling it out on Google um, that you've been seeing them defend that 90. That's the level I'm looking for on Google. If that breaks, yeah, I'd be concerned. But if that 90 keeps holding, I think they're still by the dippers here. I, I think we haven't. And, and again, you've got to think about this as well. And even for the tech stocks is all of this equals a pivot much, much sooner. So, you know, what we're seeing here this morning makes me think I don't even care what the PPI does. I don't even care at this point in time. I think all that matters here is the banks. That's all that matters. So does does tech does tech start to catch a bit again? That's my question. It's the sneaky trade because the obvious trade is the utilities. The obvious trade is the bonds. The obvious trade, you know, we know all that. But you can't make money day trading buying the TLT up 1.75% here. Now it's already run up. The trade's over. It's 3.5% spread from SPY to the TLT. What I'm saying is I saw on Monday Microsoft, Apple, Amazon all open up near the lows and immediately start getting bought. I wonder if that happens again. And I'm talking to you short-term traders out here just for an opportunity. Apple right now is not down as much as the market. Typically, you know, when the market's getting hammered, the tech stocks are down more. We are not seeing that happen, and we didn't see it happen Monday. The Qs are only down 1.35%. The SPY is down 1.74%, so they're not down as much. So I just wonder if there's a sneaky rally into tech here after the open. That's my question to the chat, too. People are saying mixed reviews, but it's already happened once. Uh, uh, just going to Apple here. I mean, th- this this stock is holding up incredibly well, considering everything. That's You're damn been, right it is. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, so th- this has just been the champ as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, sure, all time highs just over 180. Uh, but here, you know, you're still sitting at 150. So on a percentage basis, this thing is held up. So you know, a lot of times you're better off going to the stocks than, than holding up than try, you know, doing the, yeah. bot, you know, the body fisher. It's just uh, uh, so and for Apple, I mean, the setup is here. Uh, you know, you are trading at yesterday's low right here, right now. You're getting a reset. You even have a, a sustained bid here at the moment, right? Since uh, 615, 630 this morning. Uh, so, you know, you're opening into support. It's only one daily low. So I see that set up. Uh, the close was, um, you know, the close is quite a ways up there. So in order to uh, in order to get out flat, I would you. Uh, well, no, let's see. Uh, it close. It didn't close too much off the low. That's weird. Huh? What do I mean? Am I looking at the wrong day in Apple? I must be looking at the wrong day in Apple here. No, 152.59 is the close. So there's your, you know, if you get a pop, maybe not even wait for that that closing price. Depend how the spoos are ripping. But, you know, if you can pick it up in this area, 150.10, excuse me, 150.10 was yesterday's low. You could perhaps lean on that and try and exit at the, uh, 
uh, at the closing price. Uh, Microsoft, man, just a wall resistance here at 260. Uh, but you're, you know, you're getting a discount. You're trading above yesterday's low in Microsoft too. Uh, Google, what are you doing? Google, you're right. You're opening right into the low. So you're opening into one daily low on these stocks. You know, sometimes that's good. Gives you a reference point. Amazon trading 60 cents off that, but you want immediate reaction, right? Or if you're not going to come in on the open, maybe you'll get the open, you get a small flush, and then when yeah. you come back from the open, those are those are some definitely that uh, short term day trade. And again, I just want to repeat, I do have this trade on. So, um, just full disclosure, this is what I've been trying to do this morning, and it might work, it might not. We're going to know quickly, like by 10 o'clock, we're going to know if this trade is going to work or not. But all I'm saying is that history tends to repeat itself. History was two days ago there. And you can clearly remember what mm -hmm. happened on Monday is obviously, you know, bonds were holding up well. You know, obviously utility stocks and defensive stocks were all holding up well. Uh, but what really drove the market, like what really recovered the market, wasn't so much that the banks just started ripping higher. Those regionals were still down a lot of them on Monday. What happened was this money came into mega cap tech. And here we are, it's a similar, very similar setup. We're down on banking concerns, new concerns, obviously, from Europe. And I just think it sets up almost identical to what it was Monday, <clears throat> which makes me <clears throat> want to come in and buy tech for a short-term bounce here. Again, hedging it had not flat out, I'm not going flat out long. I'm literally buying mega cap tech and trying under trying to buy it under SPY. Now, again, I, like I said, I did Microsoft already this morning. And Microsoft's already above SPY, so you can't get that now. Apple was always above SPY, but Google is trading, was trading below SPY a few minutes ago. It's starting to sneak above it. Intel is trading uh, below SPY a few minutes ago. Okay. It's starting to sneak above it. Look at how well Intel's held up um, in this. So I'm just looking at you know the non-thought defensive trade because we all know bonds. We all know utilities. We all know, you know that stuff's going to hold up well. I'm trying to think what is people not thinking of here at 8.13 in this morning. I think they're not thinking about mega cap tech. I think in two hours they might be. What about uh, uh, someone made it? All short-term trades. People are saying yeah. are these long-term. All short-term stuff. Just literally I mean, looking for these things to outperform the S&P in the next few hours. Look the way NVIDIA uh, held. It's been holding up too. And it's yep. been holding up. Uh, uh, Meta has been holding up uh, on the job cuts, like right yep. near the high of the move. Yep. So, uh, what else uh, falls in that guy? Oh, AMD. Did you, I mean, if you think you missed the move in AMD yesterday, right? You're getting a little bit. Of I, I think these are the ones. If you want, like people are saying, are you buying Credit Suisse. No, absolutely not. Not Stick even thinking strength. about it. This is not coming out. Uh, relative strength, Mitch. This is right out of your playbook. Yeah. This yeah, is out of your playbook strength. too. But the relative strength here. Um, but just, you know, I, I'm credit Swiss is not coming out of the blue credit Swiss. We've been talking about credit Swiss having problems for years now. Yeah. You know, this was $2. It's down to a dollar 90. This did not come out of the blue. This is, you know, now getting a lot of headline attention because we just had two bank failures in the U S now can credit Swiss fail too. I think we kind of always knew that credit Swiss was eventually going to have problems. So I think credit Swiss, no, I'm not touching it. This isn't a bounce trade. This is one of those regionals that are like maybe got overshot because they're not as much trouble as we think. Credit Swiss is a major trouble. That so, is a really good question coming out of here, yep. Chad. And, and, and you can't show this chart. This is part of the Dennis internal arbitrage machine, uh, machine <laughs> which uh, I understand. Uh, but did, could you did, and I think you Lori, do too Lori's but, awesome. Lori, Lori's awesome. And, and yeah, Lori's awesome. Show us a short chart of what an equity under spy looks like. Mm, what does that mean, Dennis? What does it mean when an equity is under the spy? You, no, you just saying another it. stock is trading under spy. So right now I'm looking at the S&P trading down 1.6%. The banks are obviously down huge, deserved, because this is, you know, their problem. So mm -hmm. Citigroup's down 4.24%. So that's down 2.5% than SPY, which is deserved. I was saying this morning, when I was coming in, I was seeing a lot of tech stocks trading down more than 1.58%. The mega cap tax, Google still is. Google, well, Google's in line with it now, 1.5. But this morning, it was down 1.9. It was down more than SPY. So I'm looking at it that I think, Mega cap tech can outperform the S&P here today. So that's just a pure relationship trade here. The reason I'm saying that, and I don't know anything. Nobody knows. It could all change. 
But this is what happened on Monday. So all I'm saying, what happened on Monday could happen on Wednesday. May happen again. Yeah. Let, yeah. let me illustrate. History illustrated. tends to repeat itself, especially in the short term. Let so me Microsoft, illustrate it this way. Uh, yeah. Let me illustrate ahead. it this way. Yeah. Sure. Dennis is talking about the, the spy, right? Down 1.58. This is to your day traders, too. Day trader hat on right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not yes. Long-term day trader investments. Hat. So when he says under, do you see the disparity here? Apple's only down 1.21. Microsoft is down 1.38. Google's down 1.47. Amazon's down 1.48. 1.4 for NVIDIA. Tesla is trading down more than the SPY. So that does, that wouldn't, you know. Um, you know, it, Beta's it's, much higher. Typically when the yes. SPY is down 1.6, these are down 2 to 3. But they're not. Because you know what? It's not there as much their problem. That's the whole thing. It's not as much their problem. This morning, I was able to buy Microsoft below SPY. So what I did was I bought Microsoft for a short-term trade, and I shorted SPY against it. Equal dollar amounts. Saying that I think within a few hours, Microsoft could be out significantly outperforming the S&P because that's what happened on Monday. All I'm saying is maybe history repeats itself. I might be wrong. Maybe they come in with their cannons at 930 and just shoot down everything. Hey, That I- can happen. I didn't flat out buy Microsoft. I'm not flat out. You know, just buy Microsoft and hope for the best. I shorted it against the S&P. So I hope they shoot down everything. The S&Ps go down maybe faster than the Microsoft goes down. Maybe not. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm going to probably be exiting this trade either way, probably at 10, probably after the open. I'm hoping I'm going to see that pick up. I'm, I'm just hoping history repeats itself. So just talking to the day traders out there. And, and a lot of to times say. too. So I, far though this morning, I'm seeing a little bit of relative strength in Mega Cap Tech. And we saw a lot of relative strength in Mega Cap Tech on Monday. So I'm thinking it could happen. And I think if you go back o- over history, you, you're better off, you know, be- better off trying to buy the dips on big down opens like this than you know than like selling a rip on a big a big up open a can, lot of times can we illustrate to monday here too joel because people huh. still aren't getting it so microsoft yeah monday let's microsoft's take a look there. action and spy's action i don't know if you can yeah, show those yeah, two, I can but what it. you'll see is that microsoft opened very weak from the close so closed at 248.59 it opened down at 247.40 by the end of the day it was up 10 bucks the s p on monday rallied as well but not nearly as much as mega cap tech i would argue and i don't think it's much of an argument i think it's a fact that mega cap tech led monday's recovery so what i'm hoping no no anything no crystal ball here didn't travel you know like marty mcfly into the future to see and read that what the results are but what i am hoping is that history from monday repeats itself today and p- perhaps Mega cap tech comes to the rescue again. Right now, nobody is betting on that because right now all of those stocks are trading almost down as much as the S&P. By the end of the day, or not even by the end of the day, I'm hoping even by the open or by 10 o'clock that maybe there's some relative strength there. That's all. Okay, so this is Wednesday. This would be Tuesday. This is Monday, right? Here on the daily. Now, they, they started buying it right off the open and yeah. they spot it all day, Microsoft. Uh, boom, boom, boom. This is this what? What day was Monday? Monday was 13th, 13th, 13th. Joel, okay, maybe you. this is it, Dennis. Here on the 13th, and the, let no, me get that's that. it. Just that's maybe it. go to the 15th so we can see a little bit more action, maybe. Yeah, okay. Um, well, the 15th on this one on, on oh, Microsoft, boy, this is yeah, really yeah. gonna two days ago, 13. We got this, we got here this. It is. Just scroll here back it is, a little right bit. Here. It happened. There they it opened is. low and they bought the hell out of it. Now bring right up there. the SPY. You'll see a similar move, but you'll yeah, see that it's this, right there. this yeah. led it. Yeah. SPI, SPY is on the left. Yeah, so the SPY was still from Fridays. If we just go from Friday's close, we'll put a big screen so that everybody out yeah, there. Yeah, so see SPY it. closed at three eighty five ninety one. By the end of the day, it was almost flat. Mm-hmm. Microsoft closed that previous day at forty eight fifty nine. By the end of day. the day, it was up five. So I'm saying there's maybe a 1%, 2% trade here. Again, this is what I do. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. make my living trading 10%ers, 20%ers, 30%ers. I make my living is finding short-term edges. So I'm saying there's a potential for an edge here, you know, and I'm just basically throwing it out there today. I could be wrong, but uh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying here this morning. And again, I'm going to exit these trades either way. I'm going to exit them as losers, 
probably you know later in, later this morning or i'm going to exit them as winners we'll see if it works this is what i'm trying to do what i've been trying to do in the pre-market though this morning um someone was in the chat saying that the market was extended on the downside it's not now i disagree with that statement you can see the overnight action we we've, we've gotten hit from that overnight action pretty hard from like around at least the spy 391s down to 385 that's, that's, that's a big move right i mean it is a very similar move We'll find out. I think you mentioned this on before the market opened on that Monday. And I was watching that, Dennis. I watched that move happen. The same thing you were calling out, and it looked good there. I think what always is, it's a trade idea, right? We'll see what happens at the actual open to see if we can get this rally to come into play. Um, now, I did want to just at least just review what happened there in Credit Suisse. I know that some people probably already read it. Some people might are just catching in the morning here. Uh, so really quickly, of course, Credit Suisse hit an all-time low for the second consecutive day. And it looks like what's the biggest issue here, of course, is the biggest backer. The Saudi National Bank has said that it won't provide further financial help for the bank. Um, trading in the bank shares were halted several times throughout the trading morning in London. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, the Saudi National Bank responded that we cannot because we would not go above the 10 percent. It's a regulatory issue for them. And they told that to Reuters. Now, of course, U.S. big banks are down off of sympathy on this. Do they come after the big banks today? Yes. They do. I'm again, I'm nervous here because this is a bigger bank problem. Bank America doesn't, you know, isn't going to be as concerned about Silicon Valley Bank as they are Credit Suisse. So it's a bigger problem. It's a reason too the banks are now trying to break down and make new lows, the mega cap tech. Mm -hmm. I think it's very scary to try to pick bottoms here in any of the banks. And again, we played it a little bit from the risk reward on Monday with nice bounce and a few of these names. And again, I'm going to give back a lot of that money today. I did sell half of my PACW yesterday at 15 1490 1490 right around there um wish i obviously would have got out of all of it it's down at 1090 it's giving it all back here i mean this is incredible to just watch you know stocks bounce 50 percent and give it all back one day but the not holding the game is really bad so i i'm not buying anything more in the long-term account at this point in time i went from about 65 percent cash to i think around 55 percent cash i kind of regret that decision right now um, I'm still up because I bought that stuff and you know, I'm still up in some of that stuff and maybe I'm going to turn around and raise it back up here today if we get a rally. Um, cause I don't think, again, we're going to have PPI here in seven minutes it could change the narrative a little bit, but I don't think PPI is going to matter much. I don't think we're going to, if we bounce back, it's the same setup. We're going to be, they're going to be sellers into any rally here. So if we bounce on PPI, there's going to be a lot of sellers into that rally, I think. So I, I'm staying away from banks. I'm interested, like I said, short term in mega cap tech, but hedging it with the S and P. Um, wow, there's just a lot of new information getting thrown at us daily, and again, the unquantifiable risk here scares me. All right, let's. Uh, we do have to have one one earnings report that we can cover before we go to uh, sure, before yeah. we go to the PPI. Let's. let's uh, how'd Lenar do? Let's go, to Lenar. Really let's good, go. actually, Joel. Yeah, EPS two dollars and twelve cents beat a dollar fifty five estimate. Sales of six point four nine billion beat the five point nine three billion estimate. Lenar sees Q two new orders at sixteen thousand to seventeen thousand versus a fifteen point eight eight thousand estimate. I don't know who's buying a new house, but hey, it seems like somebody is. It's crazy. Um, yeah, but they would just keep going. They, these earnings were really good. Um, and the stock was trading higher. And again, it's the macro picture that's bringing this down. This was up all night. But now it's like, no, we sell winners today because the market's getting hammered. And this mm -hmm. is what the market's mentality of, especially big money is. It says sell winners as well. It's just like little money. It's just the, the nature of human thought is I'm selling what is still up. And that's why Lenar is actually getting hit here now. Nothing to do with their report. Getting hit simply because the market is getting hammered. Mitch, uh well, we I covered this on the, the closing print because I wanted mm -hmm. to give people some levels and just yeah. immediately look at that upper right chart. And if you were long, where would you try and peel out immediately? Upper right chart. Um, I would say around the 104.60 area, yeah. 104.59. 
Well, looked- yeah, I mean, I, I rounded 105. I mean, you got three highs in the same area. Same area. Rejection <laughs> from that 105. Protecting the high of the move. You had daily highs of 459, 498, and 465. And I'm not the only one that could read a chart because it went to 484 and then pulled back. On the downside, I was looking at the $95 area. I kind of went wide on that. I don't know if they're going to take it out to the woodshed, but that the support was. But uh, And once again, using these levels to exit positions, you know, or maybe hedging against an options position is much different than trying to initiate a short or something like that. But, uh, you know, if you mm. had that, you had that area. I mean, it, it, it had a couple pokes above there, but then, of course, this morning, you know, with the market being down, people are like, yeah. who cares about the report? But uh, cool. that's uh, that's just using some basic uh, support and resistance that we talked about. For Lennar, here's another stock, Dennis, that's holding up. There's a there pattern there of there, every yep. time it pops, it drops. Look at look at every time there pops on that chart. Every time, almost, like, it gives it, like, a nice pop. There's drops after that on Lennar, so to be careful chasing that Lennar chart. Uh, it's nonstop. It. I, I, I've been wrong about the home builders. I still don't own any of them. I still think they're all value traps, but it hasn't materialized, and the stocks keep going higher, and again, the keep PEs going are low. Higher. So if interest rates start to actually have to go down here, I mean, does that reignite this trade? I don't know. But we're at a point here where the Fed's like going to be eventually in a tough situation where – they may have to lay off on inflation for a little bit just to start bailing out, you know, what is happening with the banks here. Because it doesn't look like the banks can handle the higher rates. So, which is crazy to think about, but that's where we're at. Look at so, DR Horton. Look at DR Horton. Not too yeah, far from his all-time all time high. high. I mean, yeah, look at ITB. ITB, I, I just keep that on. And I, I watched this for a long time. Yeah. I was looking for the housing turnaround. It never came. I, I was looking for eventual sell-off too. It never came. It just never came. Um, yeah, definitely and, and missed that one. Easy, Mike. We definitely missed that trade. Yeah, and it happens. It happens. I think one of the things that you can do is just kind of watch sometimes. Because once you get to this point, I mean, I feel like yeah, I'm chasing. Yeah, not coming in here and <laughs> make a big mistake coming and buying them now. And then you're like, yeah. oh, I was right, but my timing was off. I'm just out. You know, I don't get it. I don't get why they give them a pass. But again, now if we go into a, a easing environment here for a bit for the bank's concern, maybe that helps all that stuff. We're two, we're two minutes away, minute and a half from PPI yep, here. Yep, yep. Let's I'm going to go on that for a few here. minutes. I'll be back at you. If we get a significant rally, I'm selling the rips. Dips, I don't know about. So, again, maybe maybe mega cap tech, but hedging it with S&Ps, not buying anything, just blindly just buying right now. I'm not doing that. All right. I got I'm, more, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to sell the rips. I got it nice and big here for you, team. I'll let Dennis go trade there. So PPI month over month, we have it consensus at 0.3. Prior was negative 0.5. We'll see what happens here when we get that. We'll also be getting retail sales. I think that's also something to keep an eye out for uh, here. It was a negative 0.3 month over month. Prior was 3.0. Um, we'll also get the core retail sales. That's not something I'm paying attention too closely, but definitely uh, retail sales is going to be interesting. PPI year over year, 5.4 prior 6.2. Will we go down here or will we come back towards that 6.2? Something to keep an eye out. Core PPI at 0.4 month over month. Prior was 0.5. Will we get a 0.3 reading? Let's find out. And a lot more. You can see here how many numbers are really actually hitting at 830. It's a lot, team. Yeah, it's, it's a like lot to digest there. Eight uh, numbers. Based on the one minute, you guys know I don't base much on the one minute chart. There's been uh, some firm sellers here at 3890, but that's only five handles away. Uh, on a pop over the 30, into the 3900 handle, I'd look at 3917 and a quarter as a potential stopping point on the downside, the all important pre-market low, the all important pre-market low comes in at 38, 70, 50. Uh, that's below right. Tuesday's low. What do you got for me, Mitch? First up U S retail sales month over month for February, negative 0.4 versus a negative 0.3 estimate prior was 3.0. So retail sales coming down fast. PPI month over month, February at a negative 0.1 versus a 0.3 expected. 
PPI coming down fast there. Core PPI at 0% versus a 0.4% estimate. So definitely I'm seeing that the estimates are off here. So if we're seeing quick reaction, kind of keep eye on the price action. What are you seeing on the price action just quickly, Joel? And then I'll keep going with some more numbers here. I, I, it is a very muted rally is what you're seeing here. I mean, you you popped, you got through that 38.90, which wasn't much. It was only on the one minute. Uh, you're, you're taking a pause here at 3,900. So it is, there's sellers out there right now. It's like, they're not, they're, they're not, they're not lifting, you know, they're, there's offers out there. They're getting lifted. We're trying to get in the 3,900 handle. I was hoping, you know, for as good as those numbers were pretty good, right? I I thought we'd be at least at 39, 17 and a quarter right now. We still have some time, but a very subdued reaction here. Uh, there's buyers off it, uh, but patient buyers are being met by patient sellers. So um, nice, you know, off the low, we're starting to distance ourselves from the low of the session. The other thing I just wanted to mention is that we've already had a 90 handle range, uh, for the day, right? And the nine day average trading range is 79. So we've already in the pre-market, it's seated. Of course, you could always have the 100, 150 point, 200 handle, you know, down days. And we've also seen the 100, 150 handles, um, on the upside. Uh, but very subdued trading. They did lift it off the low, but it just looks like the sellers are out there. They're firm with their offers. They're staying there. They're like, this Credit Suisse stuff is just uh, a little bit too much for me. But uh, now coming back down, looks like the stalls at uh, at 3,900 as we speak. Didn't even, uh, 99.75, uh, uh, you top tick that twice on the one minute. So, I imagine that if you can't get through thirty nine hundred, you'll you'll still face the same battle at thirty nine ten. You'll face the same battle at thirty nine twenty. Um, in view of all the news that we have today, that's all I have all on right. the technicals. I'll go I'm going to run to through it really quickly. Again I'll just say one guys. sec before you run through it, Mitch. Of I just, course, and I'm going to go right back. I'm just going to say if other things being equal, and if we didn't have the Credit Suisse issue happening here today, this market would ra rally significantly on this. Yep, but. Credit Suisse, just too much for the market. Give us the numbers, Mitch. All right. I'm going to quickly run right back through them. All right. So we'll start with PP, PPI year over year, 4.6 versus 5.4. Right. The month over month reading was at negative 0.1% uh, versus a 0.3% estimate. Then when we get into retail sales, retail sales month over month for February at a negative 0.4% versus a 0.3% negative last what negative was the estimate prior was 3.0 so we went from 3.0 to the negative area not what we expected at least to go to the negative 0.4 a little bit over that estimate right month over month uh for core retail sales for February at negative 0.1 versus a negative 0.1 so that came in line Prior was 2.4. We also got New York Empire State Manufacturing Index um, for March. That came in at a negative 24.6 versus a negative 8.0 estimate. Prior was negative 5.8. Um, so definitely seeing a little bit of some slowing out there. Um, and I think this does help the market, but Credit Suisse. Just, just being way too big of a wall to climb. And I felt like yesterday we were starting to climb that wall of worry, starting to climb that wall of worry. On Monday, we climbed that wall of worry. Does the worry just come back into the market today and we see some continued downside action? That's where I get a little bit concerned. And I guess we'll just have to wait for the market to tell us what yeah, happens. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with Dennis here if that, you know, that we didn't have a, the looming... Uh, crisis in Europe and the banking, but you could just see how subdued that rally was. I mean, it, it went, but there was just like, okay, you want to rally here? I'll sell it to you here. Well, you want to buy more? I'll sell it to you here. So uh, at least that's what uh, that's what we're um, seeing in the pre-market action. Uh, do we have Mr. Feinseth? Um, yes, we do. Yet? All right, team. We're going to get out of these numbers. Like always, you guys can keep up the talk in the chat and the comments. Let's go ahead. Let's kick it to our guest today. I'm going to take down Joel's charts and kick it to our guest. Let's go. This is this is definitely somebody that I know is, knows about tech. So we got some good questions coming up. All right, Ivan Feinsef, how are we doing today? It's good to have you back on. 
Well, I'm good. Always good to be here. Another crazy day in the market. I was listening to show the show earlier, right? If it, we didn't have this overhanging bad news about Credit Suisse weighing on the market, the uh, in, inflation data, the PPI, wholesale inflation data, was definitely a bullish point for the market. I mean, the Fed's been trying to fight inflation, and now the Fed looks to be winning with this surprisingly weaker, I would say weaker than expected, or in my view, better than expected number that inflation continues to come down. It was coming down at a gradual pace since the peak in June, and this just shows that it's uh, it's going in the right direction. Um, and I think you could see now with this de decline in PPI, probably next month's CPI will also probably have a f bigger tick downward. All right, Ivan, you've been around for a few uh, crises, right? Uh, a bit involved in the markets, uh, you know, a 2000 tech bubble and 2008 financial crisis and the COVID, another one, a different character. But, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're just in the midst of it. But, uh, you know, where does this rank? Where, what are some of the similarities and what are some of the differences? Uh, well, the similarities is you get this kind of panic reaction. I think the difference is, I mean, this is not a bank contagion. This is not the uh, global financial crisis of, you know, 07, 8, and 9. The banks are very solvent. The bank banks are very strong. Unfortunately, it was two issues in two banks, um, you know, which for the most part, the depositors are being protected and the shareholders probably are not, and the shareholders take risk of owning stocks. But bank depositors, savings account owners, should not have to take risk, and they're being protected. It's not a government bailout. It's doing, done through the FDIC insurance, which is what FDIC insurance is there for. So I think that this is really not that big of a crisis. But, I mean, we are in just this backdrop I mean, between the war in Ukraine, um, you know, the very soured relationships with China and companies wanting to pull their supply chain or be less China dependent. And of course, a, a Fed that's, you know, very, very hawkish in their monetary policy, not accommodative. But I think that the banking situation and the sequential decline in uh, PPI we're seeing today, it, does shift, I think, the possibility of a twenty, a probability of a twenty-five basis point rate increase next Wednesday, with a hopeful uh, announcement of, of a hold to a wait and see. I mean, if the Fed wants to be data driven, the data is saying it's working the way the Fed wants it to, so it could pause. So I could, and if we get that pause, the negative sentiment in the market and the very negative or defensive positioning could all be unwound and we could see a, a nice rally or snapback rally at least to around 4200 and if it looks like you know the sky the clouds are starting to part then i think the rally could continue all right ivan we talk to you often and we ask what is what's looking good out there i actually want to do the opposite here today uh what isn't looking good what should you uh, right now are looking to kind of stay away from in this environment well, uh, if, if inflationary pressure is coming down, consumer staples, and I would shift back to consumer discretionary. I mean, travel remains strong, and yet the cruise stocks don't reflect how good the business is. Uh, tech is always the place to be, and it's showing to be resilient. I mean, and while we get these, these themes in tech and sometimes bubbles, I think this, this AI integration if you go back to the the bubble, the dot com bubble of the '90s, CEO uh, GE CEO Jack Wells at the time said every company is going to have to be an internet company, meaning every company is going to have to have some internet presence and interact with their customers through the web. And um, Tom Siebel, the CEO, of, the founder of C3 AI, is saying every company is going to be an AI company. That every company is going to use some level of AI to um, maximize inventory to maximize their supply chain to uncover sales opportunities so you're going to see this ai adoption of machine learning looking for patterns and um neural networks looking you know for predictive outcomes and you're going to see that expand throughout almost every company at, at some level and uh, the biggest beneficiary is uh nvidia because they make the hardware or the the processors 
I mean, that uh, that are powering this, especially the chat GPT and, and uh, things like that. Going back to the Fed, do you think that if they that backed off and let's say didn't do a hike at the next meeting that it would show it would it, it, it steer, you know like panic uh more than more than good that it would do that that you know to flip again on policy i mean right now a, a quarter is factored in but even if they were considering it do you think it's something that uh you know they didn't want i mean just because they've been so you know transitory and then you know disinflationary and all the words you think that like their hands are tied that they they have to they have to follow through the quarter even though even though the data the data is okay yeah, well, it all depends on their commentary on the economy and the um, and the financial sector. So, um, I mean, Powell says, look, uh, the financial sector is sound and the economy. I mean, part of I believe part of what was supporting their hawkish policy is the feeling that the economy is strong enough to withstand higher rates. I mean, we could, the Fed has sequentially raised rates for over a year you know, next month, uh, next week, that'll mark the one year anniversary of the initial rate increases. And the consumer remains strong. I mean, corporate balance sheets are at record levels. I mean, cash on corporate balance sheets are at record levels. Companies are announcing record levels of dividend increases and share repurchases. So they don't do that unless they're confident in their cash flow. Consumer spending continues to be extremely strong, especially on travel and, and uh, dining out. So um, one of the things that I think has empowered the Fed to be as hawkish and to raise rates is the feeling that the economy can handle it. And, uh, and the most important thing, I'm sorry, I don't want to, is un employment. I mean, we are at record levels of employment because we have more people working today, than, even though we don't see a record level of unemployment, but, but an unemployment rate of 3.4% is very powerful for the economy. And remember, people working means people are making, earning money, they're paying taxes, good for the government and the de deficit. And then they're either saving or there's an investing or spending, which is very good for the economy. The old mute button trick. I never do that anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> Ivan, one top mega tech, if you had to pick one of the mega tech names to stick with, which is the one and why? NVIDIA. I mm. mean, they are just doing so many things on so many fronts. I mean, not only do their GPUs power AI, but it, it powers AI applications for healthcare to di detect and diagnose. You're going to see that that is a huge growth opportunity. They are a tremendous supplier to the auto industry for onboard computers, um, you know, to power uh, current uh, ADAS or uh, automated driver um, collision protection and um and eventual different levels of autonomy. So they have a key presence in every aspect of technology, of every, the forefront of, you know, the power of every part of technology and you know, every part of the growth areas going forward. So um, that is my number one pick in tech. Ivan Fine, Seth, you guys can check him out. Tigers Financial Partners, definitely stick with Ivan on Twitter. We'll have you back on, Ivan, and the chat. Was, there was definitely one person in the, out there that was like, that's what I've been saying, NVIDIA, guys. Well, appreciate you like always, Ivan. We'll have you back on. Thank you. Great to see you. Take care. Thanks, Ivan. All right. All right. All right. Uh, Let's peek into the market. What we yeah, like, we're, just, we're drifting lower. We're just drifting lower here. Uh, you can feel the sellers out there on that pop. They were firm. They stayed there, boom, and now we're back. We're not, Any we type of pop just was met with sellers so quickly. I mean, we had, what, about a 15-point pop yep. off the number, which yeah. it was a good number. It just doesn't matter. There's just too much weight on the overall market here. I do notice, you know, that tech is still holding up as much as, you know, we've been talking about it. We're about 1.5% down only, 1.9 mm -hmm. on SPY. On a normal day, tech is down more because the betas are higher. But this is, again maybe going to have a sneaky little flight to safety because this is what they felt was safe on monday so i'm going to keep saying that just because i think it could happen here after the open but we're going to find out so, all right well crude keep watching under to see what 70 dollars i just want to Crude's mention that crude just cracked the 70 dollar level okay. yeah, now I, trading I, it to 69 handle 
I, I I've been looking at this crude trade for a while. I will tell you it was very difficult yesterday. I got stopped out at the open there and I got back in near the top of the move. Good was able to get you. back Good into the trade there. Um, and it was risk management, right? Like I wasn't going to just let the name just rip on me either. And the whole market started the move going up. So I wasn't going to just fight it. So I got out. But one thing that I've been trying to do more of is when I get out, be able to get back into the name. A lot of times that kills your mental capital and you're not able to take the trade again. So I am swing uh, short on Chevron and Oxy. Now Valera was the one that kind Still of stopped fighting me Buffett. out. But yeah, yeah. Some people say you never you know short what? Buffett. You could be well, right. Hey, Money Mitch can do it sometimes. It, and you know what? You're winning so far because, it, well, it's kind of been holding up here. But today you're winning for sure. So because oil's it's it's about here. crude, right? I, that's what I've been talking about. I haven't been why, doing why this. Why not pick on a non-Buffett name though? It, it, just because of where it's on the chart, it's technically where, like, yeah, everyone's looking at what Buffett can buy. But if it breaks that support to me, it's one of the ugliest looking charts on Oxy. Like I mean, Conoco, they all kind of look the same to me. So that's why I would just pick a non-Buffett one. I just get scared to buy the whole company. So that's why I'm long it. Um, and I may be wrong. Okay. Obviously, you know, that's why we have a market. I almost feel like it probably would be hedged. And I, I have it on the day trading account too, but I'm, I always hedge that one out. But I have it just flat out long in the, in the long-term account just because he's got money, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I was quiet. like, you know, if you're bearish oil, I wouldn't pick on Oxy. But, you know, it again... You know, I, I give you a kudos for having the guts to fight Warren. It's all about risk management. That's what it's about. So, um, Steve Warren's been quiet, huh? Well, yeah, what do you like about quiet. these? Uh, which which of these charts do you be, think are down worse? Dirty here, though. Eventually, he's got a lot of cash. He's probably waiting for some stuff to fall. He did buy more oxy before. I think he will buy more oxy here again. I think when it's it's going to be trading down in his buy range here today again. Um, a trade down there yesterday. Sometimes these filings take a couple of days. So I do think there's eventually going to be a uh, more uh, purchase here by him, but you know, we don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he's done. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think one thing to just keep an eye out, right. is just crude overall. We now finally, at least for WTI, we've been watching, I've been watching that 72 range now getting towards the 70 range. Do we just start getting into the 60 handle? That's what I'm really focusing right now. WTI is showing 69, 94 around there. So if we can get into the 60 handle and maybe even the 50 handle, oh, I definitely think that this XLE trade could be broken. Yeah, especially for coming up in, uh, you know, intending, uh, you know, recession. Recession. And, uh, yeah, that's another yeah. play, right? It does recession concerns start hitting the oil markets. Yeah, I'm not a start f- I'm just downturn. a fan of Warren, so, <laughs> but I'm not all in on oil by any means. So, I'm with you. So, maybe Oxy on only. Trade. I would love, I'd be more comfortable if you actually was picked on another oil stock, but. <laughs> what about, what about a pairs trade with the oil down and Oxy up? <laughs> Well, well, that's what I'd be saying. I'd yeah. like rather be long oxy short XLE, which I am actually. So, I mean, that, that that's the how I like it better. But I'm just scared of the Warren. But you know, we've talked about this already. So let's move yeah. on. Bigger There's... fish to fry than oil here. I mean, if we're just looking across the board, it is selling across the board. You're gonna have trouble finding a stock that's green. I'm looking at 200 of them right now. Yeah, me too. I don't see any. Lenar and the home builders were trying a little bit earlier. Nothing. I don't see one stock. I have 200 on my screen here right now. Every <laughs> single stock red. You don't yeah. see that every day. What do you guys got green out there? Talk to me. I'm what looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. When uh, you have to look, that's probably an issue, right? <laughs> I mean. Don't give me these inverse ETFs. What do you got? Like a regular <laughs> stock that's green here. Gold. Gold, gold stocks gold, are green. Gold is green. Gold, yeah. Gold stocks uh, are gold green. Trade. So again, gold is green. That's the only thing on my screen. If I look at the little 16s. pocket of gold in the corner, yes, the gold stocks are trading in the green. Anything else? Anything I'm else looking. in the green besides gold? Uh, maybe silver. Somebody said take two. <laughs> I don't think that's right. No, take two is down as well. No, that's an odd I'm lot. having a hard time here. Yeah, so you got to watch on some of these people say. You, it's, so again, it's your systems. I mean, if you're seeing a stock that's green, you have these FINRA prints, like stocks like FOUR, you are, haven't traded today, and your system might be showing it up at 68.58. That was an old print on FINRA. The stock is going to open down. It's offered down, and it's going to open down. So it's not as simple as just looking at 
you know, what, you know, is like, you know, and again, your system there, if you're picking up those FINRA prints, that sucks. Um, yeah, Sentinel-1 is up. So they did find one. That was earnings. Mitch, we might as well cover Sentinel-1S because that yeah, is trading higher. For, that. for now. All right. This is a smaller for name. Now. For uh, now. Let's, <laughs> yeah. It's a smaller name. Let's get to that. E adjusted EPS at a loss of 13 cents. Beat the loss of 16 cent. Estimate uh, on the sales here at 126 Point one million beat the 124.66 million estimate q1 revenue outlook here towards 137 million versus 136.85 million estimate and their 24 fiscal year revenue outlook towards 640 million on the high end versus a 648.66 million estimate so lower revenue outlook for fiscal year 24. Cyber it's security cyber again gets a pass. Uh, yeah. It's lifting. Uh, CrowdStrike was strong anything. yesterday. I'm not oh, chasing no, it up but... here today. I mean, is crowd you know, we had CrowdStrike. It was up for a few days and it eventually gave it back. It's like, yeah. it's tough. tough I see the Pan W gap filling and that's why I'm a little concerned also for this area. That's held up though. You, it's that, starting the to crack. for that gap filling, but it hasn't, it is defending that gap day. Holy, PNW is a funner chart to talk about than this S Joel. Mitch, yeah, okay. look at this. Like what you're pointing out, unbelievable Gap. support. Yeah. 182.30, the low on Gap update from earnings. 182.50, mm -hmm. 182.68. Somebody is defending that Gap. They don't want yeah. to get into that Gap because they don't want to start filling. Yep, yep they are defending it. Uh, it's looking at S, uh, one of the cybersecurity stocks that hasn't gone. It's up 58 cents and a little bit of volume. Uh, the free market high comes in at uh, 1539, and then I think you got a two day high right in that area. Uh, it, it, uh, now, 1549 was yesterday's high. You're trading above that. I mean, 15, six, I mean, if this is a, that good of a report and they like this stock and they're looking at it, then it should get up to your four day high of 1561. That That's it. The longer it takes to get up and to make a home in the $15 handle, the more of a chance you haven't seen the top of yesterday's range at 1449. I do have a stock up for you, and I know Triple D has never traded it. Mitch, give me the news on AMBI. Amberella? No, oh, that's AMBA. Uh, this is like a stock. You're off the board this is an here, Joel. Stock. <laughs> it's only been out there seven days. Uh, yeah, I don't know about this stock, Joel's really yeah. reaching to find a find a stock that's trading in the Joel green. Got he is there. correct. It's up twenty one percent for real. It's bit up there too. Uh, so I did, you, you guys wanted a stock that was up. I did my best. He's correct. <laughs> Went off the board a little stock, bit. On it looks one. like just um, a little smidgen off the board. <laughs> it's not under five dollars. I should have went further. Give me an S and P stock. That is trading in the green. Besides the gold, give me an S and P oh. stock. It's got to be one. Go to your S and P filter. Yeah, hold on. Hold it's got to be one. Well, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up some top movers in a second here. So okay, uh, go on. do that, Mitch. Let's go ahead. We'll we'll we'll, we'll take a look at some movers at least. Uh, I'm looking at net change up on the market. I'm gonna bring up my screen here. We're gonna take a look into a little bit of Trade Zero. This is Trade Zero's platform. Oh, nice. Um, taking a look into it. So I'm um, just checking it out, team. Seeing how I could use it, right? So a little part of me taking a look into the top list here, just going through what's moving, right? Of course, you see what like inverse names like. SD, SDS, right? The ultra short S&P 500 are, are yeah. showing up. Uh, GLD, we talked about that, right? That's getting the lift. There's Joel's name that he saw there, that AMBI. Can't blame him for calling it out. It is up, right? 20%. Can that get the move? I think we can watch. Um, I would look for maybe above 16. There's a bunch of wicks that can't get it through 16. So a level to watch maybe on AMBI is a move back above 16, going to 18. It looks like you had this high here towards 1830s at 4.30 a.m. this morning. Can we get back into the 16 towards that 18? And of course, yesterday's high of 22.24 on that name. Uh, there are some smaller names here, a THMO. This is just starting to get a move. This looks like a more of therapeutic stock, just getting the move right now. And you can see that spike from 209 up there to 545. So 
big there's always a bull market these. somewhere even this... on this very bare day there you yeah, go man. yeah and there's always going to be some other names to kind of keep on watch you know one thing that i like to do on uh our live trading stream is definitely uh rely on other traders also because you got to know what's a part of your like kind of game and what is it right well i have a trader that kind of gave me some names so we can really quickly kind of mention here the lph this has been one that's been on the watch as of late look at the daily chart look how it keeps holding up here sideways action near the top towards seven we'll see what happens on this one definitely a smaller name that could get the nice push we'll see what happens here um on this one volume right now they did, did get some volume but in the last couple of days slowing that volume down we'll look to see if that can pick back up cdio another one that's been as of late trying to get back there towards 850 you can see that pull back towards around four can it start really moving here and getting the continued drive and the last one that i'll mention is also uh this one's an auto parts name holly Holly Inc., right? Will this get through the $3 spot? Fill the gap there towards 362. Stocks. So definitely some smaller names that are getting some yeah. lift. Just wanted to kind of mention there some of the smaller names that have the move. And of course, when you have these uh, smaller names that are getting the lift and the whole overall market coming down, just got to keep that in mind, right? Some of these trade against the market. They don't have to be so correlated. We'll find out some what happens. Some have no correlation. Yeah, some of them have absolutely no correlation, right? And so we'll keep watching there. I did see something just pop up on here. Is Humana up? No, it's not up. I saw it for a second there. It just came up and then came right back down. And of course, what do you see on here? FAZ. Uh, that's the bearish uh, daily trade for the banks, right? Will this continue? This pulled back significantly yesterday. Now already up there towards kind of 25 here in the pre-market action. Look how this took off. Um, this is definitely more of that day traders vehicle, um, FAZ. This is going to be bear three times. Of course, the opposite of this is fast. Yesterday, I was able to scalp a little bit on FAZ um, when I started seeing that downturn. Now, today, I'll be looking for pullbacks because this is just too far of a run for me to kind of jump in here at 25 when it was just trading yesterday around 23s, right? So I was able to get a little spike yesterday. We'll see if we're able to get a little bit of a pullback in these types of names. Any other one there catch your eye, Joel? No. No. All right. We're going to go ahead and wrap up there. I'm going to pull this down. But I want you guys, like always, go ahead and check out Trade Zero to access their extensive inventory of shorts locate. And I'll give you guys a link here to receive three months for free on this Trade Zero flagship software that you guys see me using right here. So there's the link there. I'm going to wrap it up here and bring you guys over to live trading. That's coming up next. You guys can keep up with Joel Alconit, pre-market prep, right? You guys go over there. Plus, and over there, going to be talking security stocks, cyber security stocks with Taz Kuljalji from uh, Wedbush. And uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, Sentinel earnings, Okta, and CrowdStrike. So relevant sector he's got a good sector to cover here everyone uh we know what we got to do we got to defend that pre-market low and if the bears get it through the pre-market low well the only thing standing is tuesday's low at uh, 39 and a quarter so everyone have a good day and uh, back with you later on all right thank you joel we'll get you out of here and you guys can keep up with joel definitely give him a follow if you don't got the spoofs what are you doing on twitter Definitely keep up with him. He goes and brings on, of course, multiple guests for the closing print. If you guys haven't caught the closing print, that was at the close. It shifted over to Joel's channel, the closing print. So check that out, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, Start Swing Trading is the show that I've been doing, taking swings like you guys see in the oil game. We'll find out if the oil game can come lower uh, today. And, of course, like always, look for tools that can help you. Trade Zero sponsoring the show today. You guys give the thumbs up. Now to bring you over to the live trading action with Zunaid, Ryan, and I, we've been doing pretty good. Um, yesterday was a day that I just fell out of the zone. And what I did was just try to do more of a redirect, right? So I didn't trade much during the market. But when I got my kind of mentality back, my focus back, I took a little bit of a break, got my focus back, was able to come back into the market with a fresh mentality, focused was able to take a trade there on FAZ, make a little bit of cash back. And then, of course, 
focus more on my swing trading action, which is my bread and butter. Like always, you guys try to find out what you're best in. What does your personality match? This is definitely going to help you take your trading to that next level. We'll see you next time, team. Smash the thumbs up. Come over to live trading. And don't forget about the book club. We're starting this Sunday, a brand new book. We've already gone through one book. So if you guys were planning on getting through some books this year for the New Year's resolution, well, of course, you guys can do it with the book club. We're going to get into Japanese candlestick charting techniques. So check that out, team. Throwing up the link right now. And for you guys that are listening to this on like podcasts or whatever, reach out to us. We'll get you in the book club. This is the only exclusive club here for you guys on Benzinga's YouTube where you can only watch if you're a part of the club. So hit the thumbs up, come over now to live trading and check out what we can get into today. Let's go team. I'm, I'm feeling good. Sleeves rolled up, coffee ready. It's time to trade team. Come on over. We'll be right back.